Hey everybody, it's Josh Mall, the voice for Swimming Pool Science, and uh, I'm on a road trip. This video is going to be a little bit different. There's not going to be any intros or a little snippet about like, share, and subscribe or anything like that. Uh, but we're going to do a, uh, a daily a daily video where we document the road trip. Um, but before we do that in each video, we're going to talk about some pool stuff, some important information that you guys can use. That way, those of you guys who are looking for some good information uh, can uh, get what you need. And then those of you that want to stick around and see what the heck my family's up to right now, you guys can watch for that in the second half of the video. So um, I want to talk about chlorine myths and myth misconceptions and uh, debunk a few of those. Uh, so let's just get right into it and get started. Uh, number one, uh, the chlorine in the pool caused my blonde hair to turn green. Well, not quite. Typically what you've got is an imbalance in your uh, water balance, uh, the saturation index, mixed with a large amount of copper in the water. So what happens is, is you go swimming in the pool and that large amount of copper in the, in the water, usually old water where it's been treated with a copper-based algae side for year, years and years and years, um, that copper um, basically uh, deposits itself in your hair and you got yellowish blonde hair, you mix that with the blue copper and you get green hair. So uh, that's what that's all about. It's not the chlorine, it's copper in the water. Uh, number two, hey, when I go to my indoor pool, it smells like chlorine. And so that's how I know the pool is clean. No, no, no. If you can smell chlorine in the air, uh, you've got a problem. What you're smelling is chloramines, and these are the byproducts of the process of which chlorine um, neutralizes and oxidizes organic compounds. Uh, these are irritating to the throat, the ears, and the nose. Uh, when you pee in the pool, um, this is what's created. Um, nitrates and things like that uh, that are not healthy for you. So what happens is, is uh, take for example, you got a pool like this. Imagine that was indoors and you got all those kids pee peeing up the pool. And what happens is you get all those gases uh, that result um, with the uh, urea in your, in your pee combining with the chlorine and that gassing off and then you're breathing that in. Uh, that is not good stuff. So don't pee in the pool. Also make sure and take a shower before you get into a pool like this. Get yourself cleaned up a little bit um, because whatever's on your body, again, reacting with the chlorine it makes that chlorine smell that's bad for your eyes your throat your nose your nostrils it irritates all that uh, number three i swam in the water and my eyes we got really irritated it was all the chlorine in the water well 90 percent false 10 percent true sure if the chlorine's high enough in the water i'm talking like 15 20 plus parts per million versus the uh, you know, two to four parts per million where we like to keep it, yes, the chlorine will probably irritate your eyes. Um, but really what it is, is it is the pH of the water. It's uh, normally an indication that the pH balance is off, uh, either plus or minus. Uh, your eyes are roughly, human beings' eyes are roughly about a 735 uh, for your tears. And so when there's a big difference, like uh, say you've got an 8.5 pH and your eyes are a 735, that's a fairly significant difference or even a 60 in the water. Um, that's a big difference between what your eyes are and it's going to irritate your eyes. Uh, let's see here. What else? Um, all chlorines are created equal. No, there's all different types of chlorines that do different things in different concentrations. Uh, what's normally known as pool shock, calcium hypochlorite, uh, that has a high pH. It is high in calcium, uh, versus your chlorine tablets, which are normally a trichlor tablet, uh, which are high in cyanuric acid and uh, very low in pH versus uh, granular dichlor, sometimes used as algae kill, uh, which is pH neutral, but even higher in cyanuric acid. So that can affect different facets of the water. So again, uh, when you're treating your water with different types of uh, fast acting chlorines, whether it be bleach, uh, sodium hypochlorite, which um, that is the same stuff that Clorox is. However, when you buy stuff at the grocery store, your laundry bleach and things like that, a lot of times that stuff has different additives in addition to the sodium hypochlorite that is the same stuff we put in pools uh, that you may not necessarily want in your swimming pool. Uh, so be careful um, with what type of bleach you choose to put in your pool. You can put straight up cleaning bleach in there, but just check the label to make sure there's no additives or anything like that uh, in, the, um, in the bleach itself and it'll work just fine. 
Here's one final one for you. You wanna make your chlorine stronger and act more aggressively, lower the pH in your pool. Now, I know I'm not saying drop it to a 3.0 or anything crazy like that. Uh, and I'm not saying keep it, at a, keep it at a very low pH. Really, for swimmability, you want it around that 7.5 under normal conditions. But you're getting a little bit of an algae bloom or something like that, don't be afraid to drop some acid in, brush the pool down really good, and then come back with your chlorine. What happens is the lower the pH is, the more of the ratio of killing chlorine you have versus at a higher pH where you have a higher amount of the non-killing lazy chlorine uh, that'll get burned off by the sun. So you want that chlorine working a little harder, lower that pH temporarily, and you'll get what you're looking for. All right, guys. Hold on, hold on, before we proceed and finish this thing up, I got one more chlorine misconception I wanna add. You may or may not have heard this before, but um, it's this one, quote, oh, we have a salt pool, we don't use chlorine here. Um, there's no chlorine in our pool, we have a salt pool. Uh, correction, salt to sodium chloride, that little thing uh, between your uh, filter and your return manifold, um, that takes the salt apart and turns it into chlorine and yes, you have a miniature chlorine factory on your pool. A salt pool is, in fact, a chlorine pool. All right, guys, uh, let's wrap this up. Uh, stick around for the story and some video highlights at the very end of day one of our road trip. All right, guys, that does it for the educational section of day number one of the Mall Family Road Trip. Here's what's going on now. Uh, so here it is. It's Monday. It's June, uh, I don't know, 21st or something. I'm not paying attention to dates. Um, but uh, we left home base in Montezuma County, Colorado, said goodbye to Mesa Verde and the um the sleeping ute uh to our to our south and we hit the road drove through dove creek and uh, on to monticello and uh, it's beautiful country up there you know you start uh, in our neck of the woods where it's kind of foresty we're right by the dolores river uh, it's beautiful and then you, you crest over the hill past the mcphee reservoir and you find yourself in just beautiful ranch and farmland uh up through dove creek and as you climb your way or wind your way up to uh the mountains near uh monticello utah um, it starts to get up a little higher in elevation and then you crest the pass a few miles outside of Monticello and down you go uh, down into the valley of Canyon Country of Utah where uh, Canyonlands is. Uh, you get towards Arches, Moab, and uh, Hole in the Rock, which is a really cool place. Uh, but it's absolutely beautiful. But man, we had a tough time getting, uh, getting things ready. I was up till 1 a.m. Uh, cleaning up the house after a busy weekend at a bike race uh, in Sholo, Arizona. And... Um, and so it was just a race against the clock to get everything ready, get the house clean so that it's all clean when we come back to it and uh, get things in order, make sure, sadly, that our stupid cat's face gets fed. Kind of wish it would starve to death, but, you know, the kids like him. What are you going to do? Um, and then we finally got on the road today after Ginger got done at her night shift at the hospital down in Shipra. So on the road we are. Uh, kids are being pretty good. Uh, you know, typical thing. They want snacks at the gas station. Um, but um, yeah, great drive. They slept most of the way and it was pretty chill. I was a little fussy and cranky. Got a few more uh, phone calls from the business line than I was hoping for on the drive. However, uh, we finally made our way up to beautiful um, Utah in the Wasatch Mountains here. And uh, here we find ourselves in Park City. So uh, we'll be spending the evening here, spending the morning a little bit, and then we'll be on to our next destination in the next episode. I'll talk about that and you'll see where we're going next. So guys, I hope you follow along with the road trip. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you found this video uh, informative and uh, useful. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow on the next installment.
if that's in handy. Mama! How's the drive been so far, Miles? Good. What's the yeah. coolest thing you've seen on our drive? Um, the rock shop. Yeah, what'd you get? Um, I got a square cube and a white thing, but when you put it under a black light, it turns purple. Fascinating. What are you eating okay. on, Willow? Skittles. Gross. Tell us, how's the drive been so far? Good. What's your favorite part? Skittles. What? Skittles. Skittles? Show us your, show us what, show us your, did you lose that tooth because it rotted out from all the candy you eat? No. Oh, okay, just checking. All right, well, we got some good sandwiches to eat here. Mm. Yummy homemade bread from the little acorn drive-in. Mm. Who knows? We probably left her at the gas station. <laughs> oh, so is that it helps if you hold on to me and helps you adapt? Oh, Willow, you turkey. <laughs> <laughs>